The topic of this video is properties of tilted or slanted lines. Let's look at two problems. First, find the slope and y-intercept of the line 4x minus 5y equals 20, then graph it. And when we're done with that, find the slope and y-intercept of the line y equals 4x plus 5, then graph it. Okay, these are clearly very similar problems, but the equation forms of the lines we've been given are different. This is standard form. This is slope-intercept form. So the way we'll get the information that we're being asked for is different for these two problems. Let's start with the first one, standard form. We learned that standard form is ax plus by equals c. Let's color code this. So a is 4, b is negative 5, c is 20. And we can use our formulas to come up with the information that we're looking for. All right, first of all, the slope. All right, the formula for the slope of a line in standard form is opposite A over B. So let's plug in what we know into the formula. All right, so we have opposite, A is four, B is negative five. Count up the total number of negatives. If it's even, the result will be positive. If it's odd, the result will be negative. We have an even number of negatives, which makes a positive. The slope is four fifths. All right, now the y-intercept. The formula for y-intercept is c over b. For our problem, c is equal to 20, and b is equal to negative 5. There's one negative, therefore we get an, uh, there's an odd number of negatives, therefore we get a negative as a result. So the y-intercept is negative 4. Okay, we're now ready to make our graph. We're just going to temporarily borrow a little bit of space from this problem over here. We'll solve this problem in a moment. All right, so we need to create the graph of a line with a slope of 4 fifths and a y-intercept of negative 4. To begin with, make a small dashed square centered at the origin, and use the borders of that square to establish the location of 1 and negative 1 on both the x and y axes. Then erase the corners. Now create a scale that's consistent with that spacing. The spacing from zero to one should be the same as the spacing from one to two, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, we'll now graph our line. We know that the y-intercept is negative four. We also know that the slope of the line is 4 fifths, and that slope is rise over run. So from the y-intercept, rise 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, we are now at the origin, and then run 5 to the right, because it's positive, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and put a point. You can do this as many times as you'd like. And you should do it until you run out of room on your graph grid. So let's do it one more time. From this point, up four, one, two, three, four, and five to the right. One, two, three, four, five, and put a point. Now, since we're graphing a line, use a straight edge. So get out your straight edge. Remember, that could be an actual straight edge, or it could be an ID card, or a driver's license, or a gym membership card, an insurance card, the side of a notebook. 
but lines, line segments, and rays need to be drawn with a straight edge. All right, and then put the finishing touches on your graph. Y on the positive Y side, X on the positive X side, and make sure you have at least one number on both the X and the Y axis to set the scale. All right, great, we've now completed this problem. Now there's just one more thing I'd like to say about this before we move on. There's more than one way to graph a line, and earlier this semester we learned a method called the intercepts method, where you replace one variable with zero and solve for the value of the other. So if we use the intercepts method and we replaced X with zero, this term would cancel, and when we divide both sides by a negative 5, we'd get y equals negative 4. There is the negative 4. If we replace the y with 0, this term would cancel. We'd divide both sides by 4, and we would get x equals 5. There's the 5. Knowing multiple ways to solve a problem is very useful because it helps you double-check the work that you've done for the problem that you've solved. All right, that problem is done. Let's now move on to the other one. All right, this problem says, find the slope and y-intercept of the line, then graph it. Well, this is actually going to be a much easier and shorter problem. And the reason why is because the equation given to us is already in slope-intercept form. So, 4, that's the slope, and positive 5 is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. This allows us to very quickly and easily create the graph of our line directly. So let's do that. We begin by plotting the y-intercept of 5. Then we recognize that 4, which could be written as 4 over 1, is telling us our rise and our run. So from this intercept, we go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, and we put a point. Now, another interesting aspect of slope is that it can be written with two negatives to still create the positive 4. 4 is the same thing as negative 4 divided by negative 1. And so, when we rise and run, we can go back to our y-intercept and go the reverse direction. Rising negative 4 would be actually 4 down, and running negative 1 would be 1 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4 down, and 1 to the left. This gives me three points that I can use with my straight edge to graph the equation of my line. You should always get as many points as will fit on your graph grid whenever you are creating the graph of a line. This will increase the accuracy of your graph. And later on this semester, we may find that accuracy is absolutely vital for getting a correct answer.